right here on uh, your favorite radio station. It's PPR, PennSpeakRadio.com. And with my show comes a featured artist each and every week. So excited to have this lovely lady on board. Kind of new to the industry, but man, has she got a voice. She's got some music out. We're going to let you guys listen to some of her music. Please welcome my guest for today, Madeline Victoria. Hey, Madeline, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Yay! Glad to have you on board the show today. <laughs> you're calling. Thank you. Now, you're calling from a little bit, a little bit from here. I, it would take you a little bit to get to where you are. I, even though it's only an hour difference, <laughs> we are chatting off air. Yeah. But if I got in my yeah. car, I'm not so sure I'd see you by dinner time. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. Uh, where are you in Texas? She's hailing from Texas. Where exactly are you? That's a pretty big state. Yes, it's huge. Um, we are, I'm at the tip of Texas. Um, that's close to, I don't know if anybody out there is sort of South Padre Island or Brownsville, but I'm, I'm close to that. My hometown is San Benito. Okay. Texas, and, uh, yep, the, ver- the very tip of Texas. So, yeah, like you said, Texas is big, and, man, it's good. it would take a while to get here. <laughs> yeah. I used to drive down to the Big Ben area, and I think it used to take me like three days. I mean, I'd hit you'd hit Texas, and you're like, "Yay!" And then you're like, "Crap! I still got a whole other day of driving." <laughs> it's yes, like, it's huge. It's like, man, why is it so big? <laughs> then you throw in some mountains in between, which makes it even harder to like drive across the state. So, so anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, you uh, are such a sweetheart. Thank you so much for joining my show today, Madeline. Um, But, uh, you know, we're going to talk about your music. We're going to play a couple of songs. Uh, You have an EP out. We're going to talk about that and find out a little bit more about what's going on with your current uh, place in the country music industry. But let's just back up for just a quick moment. People are already aware that you hail from Texas. But give us a little background about uh, how you ended up in the country music industry doing what you're doing today. Uh, you know, it's just like a really quick scenario of where, how you got here, Madeline. Go ahead. Yes, of course. Um, it started off when I was about five, <laughs> which I, that's my first performance ever. I was, of course, so young, and my parents um, saw that I loved doing what I was doing, you know, singing. So they continued to support me and to help me um, at, at a young age. And, and, you know, my mom teaching me the national anthem at such a young age as well and performing at different um, events here locally around my region and, and uh, just got getting bigger and bigger and by the time I was um, 15 years old my parents took me to this talent search that was going on here in South Texas from a group that came down from Dallas and like you said we were talking about Texas is huge it's about 10 hours away from <laughs> uh, my town of Dallas so uh, they drove a ways and they were looking for talent down here and at the time they were called Barbizon School of uh, Modeling and Acting mm-hmm. but now I believe they're a uh, school of talent um, including singing now, but um, I did those classes. I went to Dallas, took some more. Um, I competed in a, a competition in New, New York um, for some agencies, and it's um, it was a huge competition at the Waldorf Astoria. And I um, got some awards there for acting, third runner-up for soap opera, and some uh, TV commercial as well. And um, also, I won the singing competition. So a lot of a lot of agencies wanted to sign me. Um, I was very young at 16, but that wasn't really part of our plan or my, my plan yet. Um, that was, you know, really good experience for me, and um, I had to, you know, I came back home to Texas, and I, I did some um, other auditioning, and I, I got a, uh, uh, I got in this group called Radio Disney, and I did my first opening act there with um, the Jonas Brothers, and that nice. was, um, that was really awesome. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like I wanted something that, that really piqued my interest in saying, I want to do this, like, you know, I want to be an opening act, and eventually I want to be a, on the stage, and, and, you know, Growing up, though, um, ever since a young age, I've always listened to country music. Country music was my number one go-to genre. My dad, uh, biggest influence um, for me, my dad would listen to George Strait a lot, Alan Alan Jackson, a lot of 90s country, which kind of you can kind of hear in my music. Um, So I, uh, that was always on the, you know, something that I would sing. I sing country up in in New York City. I I was uh, involved in FFA and one day, you know, I will hope to have a ranch, and I always am out fishing and hunting, and so, you know, that's always just been a lifestyle that I love, and country music's always impacted me, and the stories, and the and the true sound of country music, like, you know, I love a fiddle, I love a steel guitar, something that I'll never, ever leave out in my music, no matter what, I always say that to everybody, so, um, like I said, though, going back to opening up for Jonas Brothers, and then 
uh, just doing different competitions. And when it came down to, like, you know, really deciding what I was going to do with my life at around 17, 18 years old here at the high school that I went to, they're very, you know, very good at helping us decide, okay, you know, college and, you know, what university and, and everyone's making that life decision, like, you know, the next steps. And I just thought, hey, this is my, this is my next step. This is what I'm going to pursue. And I know it's going to be hard, but just like anything else, you know, everything's hard. And, and I, I got together my first band mm-hmm. uh, my senior year of high school. And, you know, I thought that this has to grow. And, and from all the advice that I've um, learned from so many people, um, anything that I've been involved in and, and whatever advice people have to give me, I take it in and also um, with a lot of prayers and a lot of um, support from my family. It's just been nonstop from there and, and playing and booking myself everywhere. I book myself. And uh, wow. seeing people like Mr. Michael Stover, you mm-hmm. know, helping me with my single and, and really trying to get out there. And, and uh, it's, just, it's just been awesome. Um, and, and I'm super excited about the more, the more things to come right. with me in, in my career. Nice, nice, nice. And it sounds like you've got the enthusiasm and, and the energy for it. Now, when you talk about your music, Madeline, are you, uh, are you writing your own music at this point? Is this EP something you wrote? Yes. Definitely. Okay. Um, I've been songwriting since I was um, 13. Okay. And so n- nothing formal, like no, no, not even voice lessons I've ever had or any songwriting lessons or anything. I just read what I can and um, I, I get influenced by the songs I want to write like. You know, like I mentioned before, George Strait, all his hits, you know, the number ones don't lie. They're, he must be doing something right. So I uh, use his little formula, whatever I hear in there and in, mm-hmm. in, in his songs. And also Johnny Cash is a major songwriter influence in my music. But yeah, I, I mean... That, all, that whole EP is um, my are my songs, and I have so much more material that that I write every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I also I, I write with my brother. He's a, a really great songwriter, and um, he's my guitar player. He's always with me on stage, and um, also just like kind of whenever I need advice or whenever I need something. He's my younger brother, but he's so smart and and just so so talented, and, and we're there for each other in in, in the industry. But um, I. Just this past year, too, we went to Nashville and started to get into the more songwriting scene there, too, co-writing with other people, so I'm learning about that, too. And uh, But for the most part, um, I write my own stuff, and um, I'm just glad. I, I think everyone out there is enjoying it, so I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it sounds like you must be doing something right. Your persistence and your enthusiasm, um, you know, kind of sets the stage for a lot of things. I mean, you've already got quite a few performances you know, under your belt, uh, you've done some sporting events, you've been uh, at political rallies and ceremonies and rodeos, and I was reading something that kind of made me giggle a little bit. You've, you've actually walked away with a couple of crowns, including being a, a country cowgirl and a homecoming queen and um, some of these other things, which I found interesting. Are, are, do you do the rodeo? Are you, are you, it says you, you were the inaugural rodeo queen, so that doesn't mean you actually do the rodeo, or do you? No, I, I do not. Um, you know, I horseback ride every now and then, but I'm not involved in, uh, in that pretty much. Um, here in, in South Texas, they, they have a couple of small rodeos, and one of them is um, from a town that's right next to mine. It's um, Los Fresnos, and they've been um, in association for about 20 years. And my senior year of high school, they, uh, they decided to have a rodeo queen for the first time in 20 years. And since I was already a Cameron County cowgirl, um, and that, you know, that, that has to do with the, the FFA organization. They would put on these. Um, different pageants for for the girls involved in in the animals and, and raising the, the the animals and the ho- mine I raised hogs in high school, mm-hmm. but um, they did, <laughs> they did that just you know to add you know a little bit of uh, I don't know just fun and and getting to know these girls was really nice and really fun and like you said I was uh, got rodeo queen they crowned me rodeo queen and that was uh, just kind of like a representation and since I sang to you I would sing the national anthems at uh, the rodeos that they have there so. Um, yeah, that was, it was really fun, and I think it kind of goes, you know, hand in hand with singing and performing. I mean, you know, the spotlight's on you, and you have to make sure, you know, you're representing something um, nice, and you're on stage when you're competing, so right. it kind of, you know, helps along with, with all the experience. Well, and also in, in your bio, and I, and I want to make sure I, I point this out, and then we'll we'll get back to your music a little bit, but I always like when I see that the artists that I talk to, you know, kind of give back to um, give back to the community, communities that they're in and, and it kind of like, you know, a little bit thank you, you know, because without, without those people who come to your show, without those people who buy your music, without those, you know, your fans and stuff like that, you know, 
no matter how big you are, you don't have your fans, you got nothing. And it's nice when you can turn around and give some things back. And I see that you're involved with things like events for special needs children and children's hospital and rehab centers. Um, how did that become the, um, the, 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 the thing you wanted to do to give back? How did that, I mean, there's so many different organizations out there. How did you end up picking, you know, children and children's needs and things like that? Yes, um, I, I've been involved in community service since I was a lot younger. Um, even being in Girl Scouts, learning at, at such a young age what it means to do that and give back, and my family members, you know, really influenced that in me. And it's just something that's also been within me. I love to help people as much as I can, and uh, it's, it's just the joy that that I get from seeing any if, if I bring any joy to them. And um, like you said, I. I done many um, events. In high school, I used to compete, actually, for community service events. Um, we would go all the way. It's called Skills USA, and they had a, a leadership portion of this, and so every year we'd come up with a different event and different anything that we could do, and um, child abuse awareness was mm-hmm. part of um, a really big, played a really big part in, in uh, my community service, and I continue that still to this day, even when I have um, I had a CD uh, release concert here locally at a, at a baseball park, and, um, you know, my half of what I made there I would donate to a, a place called Maggie's House, and that's where actually the child abuse um, investigations go on. Mm-hmm. So um, I donated that to them, and I, I sing at the hospitals every year, especially during the holidays. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm trying, you know, if I, bring, if I could bring any joy to somebody, and it might, might as well be a child who can't spend, you know, Christmas at home and sure. um, they're there in the hospital. So, and I, I do that. I also crochet blankets for them. Aww. And, um, so, yeah, I just, I do, I feel like my time is, has to be worthwhile and, um, you know, while I'm here and, uh, I, and doing what I love and, and getting to do what I love, it, it's not that it comes with a price. If there's lack of a better word right now or saying for me, I mean, um, it's just something that, that I love to do and, and just something naturally I, I can't, I can't imagine not doing you know, what I do right now and giving back to my community nice. without, you know, singing and all that. So, <laughs> Well, that's cool. And, you know, um, I, I think that's interesting. And, and one of the things, too, is, is getting your music out there and in a roundabout way, you know, to be able to, you know, provide your fans with some great music. And, you know, you're writing, uh, you're doing your own writing and things like that. When you, when we talk about this EP, we're going to, we're going to uh, cover one more thing yet. We're going to take a quick break and pack, come back with a song. Um, but that's what I want to hit on. If you wrote all the songs in the EP, the one that you released, which is out there as your single right now, is He Only Loves Me on the Dance Floor. Is that something from personal experience? Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that song? That's your single right now. Yes. Um, he Only Loves Me on the Dance Floor. Um, probably about four years ago, I started writing this song. And um, I finished it up not not too, like, you know, sometimes it could take like five minutes to finish the song or sometimes years. But this one... It, it, was, it took um, probably about a month or so, but um, it started off with um, just being influenced by going out here in South Texas, dancing a lot, and seeing what I see. I've been to so many dance halls here in Texas, and it's just something that made sense, you know, what mm-hmm. I see on the dance floor and, and the phrase and whatnot, and, and uh, it, just, it just, you know, kind of all came together, and um, it started, I did um, at the time have a uh, boyfriend who we would go dancing all the time, and you know, it ends up he did only love me on the dance floor in a sense, I guess. We're not together. We're friends. But, I mean, you know, that, that also helped me finish that song and influenced me um, in, in writing that and finishing that. But it's also about, you know, maybe meeting someone new at the dance hall mm-hmm. and uh, that physical attraction that you get. And, oh, no, I shouldn't do this. But, you know, everyone knows after a few drinks, it's just, <laughs> you know, somehow you end up doing it. <laughs> you end up just dancing with them and it's, like, you know, great and fun. But... <laughs> um, yeah, however anybody wants to take it, you know, in their own perspective of my song, uh, that's fine by me. Like you said earlier, the fans, you know, I'd be nothing without without them and, and without them liking my music. So however they want to say it, a lot of girls tell me, you know, that's my song, and it's true. You know, it's everyone's song. So um, nice. I'm excited for more and more people to hear it, and I'm excited for um, everyone out there right now that's going to hear it. That is Madeline Victoria right here for you on Wall to Wall Country, her single that was just released off of her self-titled five-song EP, a little tune called He Only Loves Me on the Dance Floor. Hey, girlfriend, been there, done that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I could see how... I could see how a lot of ladies, um, you know, can say, hey, I echo those sentiments totally, you know, and it really kind of like, 
brings it home a little bit. And man, you got a voice, girl. You got a. I, I'm sitting here going, man, it sounds like Sarah Evans or something like that. I mean, I would mistake <laughs> that in a heartbeat. Good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent job. Uh, you know, and I, and I think that's important, you know, that um, you kind of have your own style, but you've definitely got the qualities in your voice that's going to take you somewhere. And songs like that, I mean, you know, I think everybody can, you know, do those silly songs or those funny songs or the patriotic songs, you know, whatever. But some of the songs that can talk directly, directly to your audience, you know, every woman that, that you play that for, I would bet, can go, yep, mm -hmm, been there, done that. I know exactly what that feels like. <laughs> You know? Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's what I get. I get that. Do you find that at your time? <laughs> do you find that at your shows, the women are sitting there going, giving you the thumbs up, and the audience going, "Yeah, girlfriend, I feel ya. I feel ya. Are you getting that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That every all my shows definitely. Yeah. Do they know the words to it? <laughs> yes, they do. Here, um, <laughs> yep. The more the more shows I'm playing, you know, I, I start to see. Uh, even it's funny, you know. Even the guys, like they take it to them. They start to, they even know it. It's funny to me. Like they, they love it too because they say, "Well, I've been through that too." She only loves me on the dance floor, so it's yeah it's something that uh that hits home for for a lot of people. But wow. yeah, definitely the ladies. Um, yeah. A lot of my friends, a lot of fan, new fans and friends that I get, they're like, "Yeah, that's my song. That's that's exactly you know how I feel." And <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing, and and I think social media is one of those things that really help accomplish that. Uh, now you're on Facebook. We're friends now. Yay, we can chat, girly things off air. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got the Twitter, uh, Twitter, and some of the other social medias going on. People can find you there too. Yes, they can find me. Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'm working on a new website, but it's still up there and up and running. Uh, MadelineVictoriaMusic.com. Um, you know, I have all my show schedule and music and um, YouTube. I have my music video on there um, mm -hmm. for the song. He only loves me on the dance floor. People can check out and see. And uh, yeah, they find me anywhere on social media and the internet. Uh, yeah, and all they have to do is is probably search as for as search as much as Madeline, but you'd get a little bit home or home closer to home if you do Madeline Victoria. Uh, find her out there as a, a country artist doing a fine job um, and your schedule your show schedule and stuff like that it's also you are you throwing stuff out there on the Facebook and the social media is about that yes I'm always up on that you know like I said earlier I, I book all my own shows and I do you know my own advertising on that as much as I can so nice. yep always always updating that awesome 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 and uh, we'll make sure that uh, you know, uh, I put uh, the Penn Speak Radio link on your Facebook page so you can uh, like us as well, and we'll throw some stuff out there. Um, but good stuff, you know, and I got to tell you, you, you were talking about uh, the music. I think what we want to do is sneak in one more tune here uh, real quickly as well. Um, but one thing I want to touch on that is uh, a little something that I think is interesting. You've, you know, you're talking about your shows and how you're doing a lot of hometown stuff and you're booking your own shows and stuff. But, man, you're also playing for some big guns out there with some bigger audiences. You know, we're talking, you know, Tracy Lawrence, Dunstan Lynch, the ZBB band, uh, Charlie Daniels. That had to be a lot of fun. Uh, are you yes. finding that these people are opening their doors to you? Yes. It's, um, you know, like you said, it, that's, it's always been kind of remarkable to me and kind of, wow, like, I, kind of stunned. I get sometimes that, I, I like you said, I'm here locally in my region and um, in South Texas and, um, you know, I'm trying to get out there a little more in northern Texas, and, and really soon we're going to be working on, you know, different booking agencies and stuff. But for now, and the experience that I have, I feel like I've been doing this, you know, for so long, and all the shows that I've had, um, I feel like it's just as much as I would learn if I was on the road out there everywhere, because like you said, there are bigger audiences. Um, here in South Texas, there are just thousands and thousands, even up to a million people here, and I just feel like Man, you know, like I said, the experience that I could get on the road, I'm getting here because of all these big shows and all these big productions and the energy of a big concert and what goes on backstage, what goes on, you know, with all these bigger with all these bigger bands and and those those sets of just being on there like you know 45 to an hour and like boom boom and real quick and you know all the crowds screaming and yelling and it's just man, it's just something that um that I've so thankful for um mm -hmm. i've been able to do so much that you know, here at home i love being at home i love being on the road but being able to do this here in my hometown and gain as much fans as i have here on on facebook and 
you know, all the likes I get, you know, I feel like eventually I'm going to get out there a little more, but I've, I've really, you know, won the hearts of people here in my hometown and here in, in um, my region and, and doing that with a big artist and learning from them. And, man, it's just, like you said, Charlie Daniels was just, wow, just to share the stage of the legend. Yeah. Um, a lot of Texas country artists, um, you know, they're they're not, you know, maybe not as well known as all these other national artists, but here in Texas and in Oklahoma and um, Arkansas, different places around here locally, you know, they're they're really big and and to share the stage with them too, you know, they're doing this all on their own too, and they they bring a great crowd and being a part of that crowd and um, it's just it's just amazing. Learning experience is great, and I'm I'm just so thankful to to have that under my belt right now and and ready for more to come. Nice, nice, nice job. Well, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of doing some songs and some some music, we're going to take a quick bottom of the hour break, and we want to come back with one more tune. That you're thinking uh, off the EP. You're not real sure which one you plan on setting out as a, another single, but one of them that you had mentioned to me was "Hold On," and I think we'll come back with that one. Um, what's "Hold On" all about, Madeline? Hold on is another, you know, kind of love story that people can relate to. It's about, you know, maybe maybe it's a continuation of dance floor. Maybe it did work out where he doesn't only love her on the dance floor, but he really wants to hold on to her for the rest of her life. So uh, that's basically finding the one and, you know, wanting to spend the rest of your life with him and, and uh, just kind of a sensual feeling as well, mm-hmm. um, getting close to somebody and, you know, the kissing, the touching, and um, just something that a lot of, like, I know a lot of people can relate to, so, and I hope um, everyone likes it. <laughs> Once again, Madeline Victoria, a tune off of her self-titled EP where you can get your hands on it on most of the electronic ways out there. Catch her Facebook page and her Twitter page and her website uh, right there. Uh, You can find out more information about her. And uh, hey, Madeline, that was a good one too. I like it. I really do. Got some good stuff going on there. Are you there, Madeline? Madeline, are you there? Uh-oh, must have lost her. Uh, but uh, hopefully she'll call us back. But uh, Madeline, Victoria, good stuff, uh, good stuff right there. And, um, man, you can find her on her, her website, her Facebook page, her Twitter page. And uh, we're going to be featuring another one of her songs at the end of the show for sure. Um, and that is uh, that is coming up in just a little bit. Let's see if uh, we got Madeline back. Are you there, Madeline? Yes. I'm so sorry. My signal um, faded, Polly. <laughs> That's okay. Glad to have you back. I was just telling the folks that uh, you're going to have, uh, you've got uh, your music. Where, how can they get your hands on your music? They could go to um, iTunes or any uh, online retail store. Um, I sell my CDs at all my shows, and I'm working on um, getting my store up on my on, online for my, for my website so they can get some hard copies if they'd like. But um, for now, you know, they got the iTunes and Amazon, and um, they could follow me on Spotify, my music on there, get my album from there, or, you know, however, you know, I'm pretty much everywhere um, on every retail store, so they can get that. And uh, I'd really appreciate it if they like my music, so thank you, guys. Okay, and that's uh, MadelineVictoriaMusic.com. Um, now, you said something about you're your making a new website. Is it still going to be the same link, or are they going to have to look for yeah. something different? Oh, you're going to keep the same link. Yes, it'll be the same link. I'm just, I guess, I guess, I'm, what I meant to say, I'm just working on some, you know, new graphic designing and all. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, same link. Awesome, awesome. And I see you have a, a little video on there. Uh, apparently, you did that the one that song for um, on a on a video as well. Uh, but you can shop yeah. on her website. You can check out her shows. Um, and I can see that you know some of these pages are under construction. But you keep checking back with. Uh, with the website at madelinevictoriamusic.com. You've got quite the busy schedule there, girl. My goodness, there's you've got a lot going on over the next, through all through, uh, up until next April, you got a couple of great shows going on. Yes, I'm uh, super excited. I Like I said, I you know, I'm booking myself, and I you got to do that. If I, I do what a booking agent would do, get those shows in early and uh, get the schedule down. So nice. I'm excited about that. And then in January, I don't have any shows because I'll be on the road with us. My first radio tour, so oh nice! Um, I'm excited about that one too. Great, awesome. Well, you know, if you ever get up to Pennsylvania, uh, we'd love to have you in our studios and uh, include us in your radio tour. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, we have a nice little studio. You can play a couple of tunes for us. We'd love to have you. Oh, great! Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. So before we let you go, we're going to do one more song at the end of the show to remind everybody if they missed the interview um, to uh, check back on Sunday. This entire show gets recorded and gets played back on a Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern. That would be 9 a.m. your time. Uh, with the interview in the second hour, so you can uh, throw that out on your Facebook page if people want to hear the interview. Uh, but we're going to close it out with another one of your tunes, and you were talking about doing Breaking My Heart again. Should we close out the show with that one, Madeline? Yeah, that would be great. You know, that, I'd, I'd love to hear that one, for, or I'd love to, for them to hear it. <laughs> and, and is that another heartbreak song, something that you experienced, <laughs> just uh, something you drew uh, energies from? Where did that one come from, dear? Yeah, I guess people can hear that in, in my songs, but yeah, pretty much, you know, um, it's kind of like when you see that person again after um, the heartbreak is done and, and, you know, like, you know, you're not, you're not together anymore, but then you see them and your heart just starts breaking as soon as you, as soon as you see them just, you know, walk in a room or wherever you're at and mm -hmm. like, oh no, I gotta go, you know, it's like, just your heart breaking all over again but nice. uh, that's, that's pretty much what it's about. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll be playing that one at the end of the show. Madeline, Victoria, thank you so much for being on, on my show today. Uh, it's definitely... Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure, and uh, please keep in touch. you got something new going on. Feel free to get in touch with me through either Michael, or you can shoot me a message on Facebook. And uh, my guests are also always welcome back. So maybe you got something new and exciting going on in a couple months. Feel free to let me know, and we'll get you rescheduled on the show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Casey. I appreciate it. All right. Madeline Victoria, ladies and gentlemen, catch her at MadelineVictoriaMusic.com. Find her on Facebook. Follow this lovely lady and uh, stay with her on her path through the country music industry. And I'm sure it will be a successful one at that.